if you're a regular person, you probably don't think twice about pushing your grocery cart or tying your shoes or putting on your clothes or jewelry. But if you have RSI, it can be a totally different ball game. And here to talk to us about the issues of coping with RSI on a daily basis, doing your acti activities of daily living, such as grocery shopping and all the rest of it, is Alexandria Karstens, dragon extraordinaire uh, who lives in Canada. And soon to join us will be Howard Edgerman. He's having a little bit of technical difficulties, but we'll be back soon. So Alexandria, let's start with you. What do you want to tell us um, maybe about this idea of um, kicking the can down the road, as they say? <laughs> my, my football shopping cart method, or I should yes, say. Yes, the basket. football, love that, football I, shopping cart. Yeah, technique. when I was first stricken, I mean, I could barely move my arms. It was terrible, but you still need to eat. You need to go shopping. And after a lot of thought, I realized that I needed a good backpack, one that will sit on my hips and be secure to my body, but not be too big. Because obviously, if you carry too much in your backpack, it's going to weigh you down and cause problems with your shoulders. So that was my limit, was whatever I could fit in a reasonably sized backpack. So I would take that to the grocery store. There's no way I could push a cart. Um, so I used the basket. But the problem with the basket is after adding a couple items, it started to get heavy. And one of the things I realized is that you have to shelve your um, self-image. And I didn't care what I looked like. I knew it was ridiculous. Uh, but there I was putting the basket on the floor and kicking it like it was a football or i should say soccer ball really um you know down the aisles up and down the aisles i went i would add items to it and i would just keep pushing it with my foot after a couple of times i realized it was better just to leave it at the end of the aisle i mean who's going to steal groceries out of my basket <laughs> and uh i would go down the aisle pick up a couple items that i could carry walk it back to the um uh, basket put it in the basket. And then I would sometimes ask someone to lift it up for me to the cashier, or I would just leave it on the floor and slowly unload it at my own pace. Um, and grocery store clerks uh, tend to be very eager to help, usually. And uh, I'd ask them to load instead of in bags, put it the items in my backpack. Somebody could make a great, uh career out of helping people <laughs> their grocery shopping. You know, they could. And never underestimate that, honestly. Um, people are more generous than you would think. I know when you're in a lot of pain, you get jaded. I was horribly jaded. Um, still am sometimes. But uh, it's amazing the number of people who will help out. Never be afraid to reach out. But um, that's how I would do my shopping. And with the items in my little backpack, and I'd sort of turn around with my back to it and strap it on. And then once I got home, I would offload it onto my counter so it was easier to put everything away. So it, it took me a while to get my routine down, but it worked really well until eventually I could push a cart with my body. So I sort of drape my my arms over the cart and then just sort of walk it around, which was kind of funny in itself. But like I said, I didn't care what I looked like to other people. It was just how, it, it's no, what I had That's a do. great strategy. I mean, using your whole body instead of your hands. Yes. It's an amazing power. I mean, the most powerful part of your body is your pelvis. Yes. You can really use your glutes. And so you don't really have to strain your hands you get a uh, workout you do yeah <laughs> the, the, the rsi workout for the rest of you yeah just don't go too fast because how are you going to slow it down or stop <laughs> you, know, it? <laughs> you, know, you don't want to be crashing into other people but i've seen people who aren't i don't think they're injured they just get tired of holding the basket and yeah. so it's not uncommon to see people shoving the basket or inching it forward or nudging it with their foot yeah which is a yeah. great great strategy for people with RSI. 
Yeah, thank you. And and it limits the amount of groceries you walk out with. And oh, the added bonus is if you only buy a few things at a time, uh, you're having to go to the grocery store more frequently, but you get extra exercise doing that. And you need to get your blood pumping and you need to do some exercise. I think, Deborah, you know that. Oh, yeah. But I mean, that's exactly what I do because I'm limited by the amount of uh, groceries that I can carry, especially yeah. liquids. Um, yeah. You know, I have things like dishwashing detergent delivered to me because I just don't want to have to deal yeah. with that when I'm getting produce. You can choose your produce and then you don't have to with the, the goods that aren't spoilable, you know, yeah. heavy things like dishwashing detergent. Oh, exactly. And also buying the smaller can. I mean, if you are having problems lifting things, yeah. it's not as economical, but or you could shift it into a smaller container in order yeah. to, you know, do things. But like things like laundry detergent. Yeah. Um, can get heavy. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. If I mean, 25 years ago, they weren't shipping a lot. Um, but nowadays, uh, wow, you know, they'll ship pretty much anything to your door. Thanks almost to the pandemic. So. Yeah. 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 But I like what you said about, um, um, you know, having people, I think you said something in your email to me about having people reach for you to lift. Them. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And if someone's around, um, or just kind of hang about. Someone's going to walk by sooner or later, whether it's an employee or another person. And and I've never had anyone refuse me. Never. Mm -hmm. And so don't be afraid to ask. Don't, you know, swallow your pride. If that's, and for me, that was a huge issue. Um, I've always been totally independent. And unfortunately, this was a cold splash of... Uh, water to my face when I became injured and you just have to do what you have to do and and almost wear it with pride that's okay and be yourself do what you need to do yeah yeah it's hard to ask for help when you have um, any kind of issue I think asking for help yeah. just a lot of people just want to do it themselves and yeah. you don't want to get into a 45 minute discussion of whether RSI even exists with someone you barely know. You know? Yeah. It's just not something, Oh, you can't do that. That's so easy. What's the matter with you? You know what I mean? So um, I think just, you know, asking for help graciously, thanking people graciously. And mm -hmm. I too have found that the, um, the clerks at the grocery store, can be enormously helpful, although yeah. they get RSI too. Yes, they do. And so mm -hmm. I worry about them. But here's a hint for you who are working the cash register. Um, if it hurts for you to reach for things, people will generally reach for their change. You know, you just have to hold it up and they'll let them reach for the rest of it. And um, I do worry about the, the cashiers because that, you know, that oh. pressing against those hard glass surfaces sends yeah. thousands of pounds of um, pressure through your joints and uh, they, they get injured too. So it's, it's really a tr yeah. troubling thing. Uh, I swear I see half, at least half the clerks always have those wrist braces on. And yeah, I just, which is not good. You, sh no. you shouldn't be working with them on. Um, it can really lead to problems. So, um, so. Um, hey, yeah, I just want to just say, uh, a lot of times people will help you anyway without asking. You know, they will say, can I help you with this? Right. So. That's true. It helps to be old, too, and have gray hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just want to mention that. I think some people are happier helping older people than they are disabled people. And one of the happiest days of my life was when I traded in my uh, disability uh, discount for a senior discount Did uh, you on BART and AC Transit. So I just want to just mention that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, th I think it's yeah. hard. You know, disability is... Um, tricky because everybody at some point or another is going to be disabled. I mean, just age will do that to you. And there's such a stigma against uh, disability in general, but that's a good point. Um, but take advantage of what you got. Yeah. 
But Howard, <laughs> while you're here, why don't you talk to us about your your method of keys and bus paths yeah. because that's something that people will find helpful. Well, what I mentioned to Deborah is that I have deeper veins, and the biggest problem for me is bending and twisting. So I try to use the hand bank uh, principle, and what I try to do is what can I do to use the less twisting and bending? One thing I can do is wear my passes. So when I board the bus to go to work like I did yesterday and I'm teleworking today, I'll do this tomorrow, all I do is just move the uh, card to the reader and I'm on the bus. I don't have to fumble in my pockets to get it. The same way for my keys. I wear my keys. I don't have to fumble in my pocket. So basically what I do is I save myself from getting pain. But what I mentioned to Deborah is that I think we need to look at what our RSI is. My worst one is uh, decrevains. Anything of twisting and bending literally kills me. So I try to reduce that. And that is one way in which I did it. And it's the same way with tying shoes. Because, uh, you know, with my uh, Velcro shoes, I just put my feet in. And what I mentioned to Deborah is now Skechers is encouraging people, I guess older people too, as well as kids, to just step in, in them. So they may be learning from our RSI folks. But I just want to just mention that is one thing that I try, try to do because uh, my deeper range is the most severe thing I have, in all frankness. And I got it from hitting the space bar a lot because I was a typist in the Navy and going to college and all that stuff and when I started work. So that's what I try to do is reduce uh, how much twisting and bending I have to do. Yeah, well, Alexandria also brought up this idea of the handbake by doing things a little at a time, you know, mm -hmm. not doing it and thinking ahead, you know, to what yeah. what can you do to reduce or space out so that you've got a break in between a heavy task and, a, and another heavy mm -hmm. task. Um, anything you can do. And also, Howard, what you said is very important in terms of the the way people have the injury will dictate what they need to do because you might have epicondylitis or thoracic outlet syndrome or a shoulder impingement or something that makes it difficult for you to reach. So there's all different kinds of ways, you know, either using your body differently, like pushing the grocery cart with your hip or mm -hmm. the, the grocery basket with your foot nudging it along it while you're waiting in line that's using your body differently but there's also mm -hmm. adaptive things um but one thing i'd like to say and if you have anything to add um exploring canada maybe you've got some tips you'd like to throw into the chat so share with us as long as you're here and we're we're so happy to see you um but alexandria has a method of um sous chefing so she loves to cook. So talk to us about that, Alexandria. Sure. Um, so, I mean, while I was really, really bad off with my hands, um, it was just buying pre-prepared meals and very inexpensive food, like salad in a bag. And uh, at 25 years ago, there wasn't a lot. There's a lot more now. You can get so many different meals already pre-done that you can take home at reasonable price. Um, but anyway, but because I love cooking and I couldn't cook for the longest time in those early years, uh, eventually once I was able to do a little bit, I wasn't really able to cook like a whole meal, you know, from start to finish myself. So I invited people over to be my sous chefs. And so they would do all the prep work and I would do the final cooking, right? And they would get a free meal out of it, maybe a recipe. Um, and we had great conversation and they helped me out. It, so it ended up being a thing and it was really helpful. And eventually I was able to cook a meal from beginning to end. Sometimes the kitchen stays a mess for about a day afterward. Um, I have to say last night I cook something and I looked at the kitchen this morning and I thought, oh my God, I'll got to clean this up eventually. Um, thank goodness for a dishwasher. But 
ask your friends to help you out and, you know, buy pre-prepared foods. There's a lot more available now than there was uh, 25 years ago. So there are options instead of ordering takeout or having food delivered because that is getting really expensive nowadays. That's true. And also, as you pointed out earlier, cooking in batches. Yes. You know, so if you're going to make a meal, yes, make enough and freeze it in your, yourself. And I think that the food that we make is always better than the takeout. Oh, definitely. I'm sure the ingredients are better. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. I was just going to say one of the best investments I made was a really good slow cooker. And in there, I can make soups, I can make sauces, uh, so many things. And it's not a heck of a lot more on your hands to make a larger batch than, say, a single meal batch. Uh, it is a bit more prep work, but just factor that in. That's what I do. And then I have all these freezer meals. So if I'm having a bad hand day, I pull out a freezer meal, whip up a batch of rice or pasta, whatever's supposed to go with it, or just a hunk of bread if it's, you know, stew, and, and I'm done. So when you have that in your arsenal, you're not feeling bad. You're kind of feeling proud that, hey, look what I made. And and it's coming in handy. Um, Alexandria, I, I'm really proud that you mentioned this because – I think I mentioned earlier on another broadcast that when I testified at OSHA, I wrote to all the employee reps, what should I say? And I was really upset when this one woman said, I feel like a failure as a mom and a wife because I cannot cook. And I just wish that I had known about what you do, that I could share that with her because you don't need to have RSI cause you to feel like a failure, like a lot of us sometimes do. You can do things like you do in such a creative way. So I really admire what you did. And in the future, if I run into any of the people I represent who mention that, uh, yeah. I will share some of your ideas. But that is Thank really you. fantastic. I really admire what you, the way you handle that so much. Thank you so much for bringing that up. Thank yeah. you. That's and, so sweet of you. Yeah. Well, this is this is. Um, we just had a a comment from Exploring Canada, um, and you know she brings up another issue, which is traveling. Yes. RSI and per, oh. and that's a really important thing, because lifting a suitcase in the overhead bin can oh. be really hard. I mean, I think a lot of. Um, airline personnel get shoulder injuries because really this movement of lifting up is not um, it's not a helpful uh, thing to do. And, you know, wheeling, you know, obviously everybody has those rolling uh, things, but packing light, I am the queen, the queen of light <laughs> packing. People can't believe it. I went to a workshop in Italy once and people were just saying, you, you keep coming in these different outfits. How do you do that? And well, it was silk. You know, <laughs> it's very yeah, light. Yeah. Just ride it, roll it up and, yeah. and tuck it away. But um, I bought a really light suitcase because the problem with suitcases is they're heavy to begin with. Just lifting them empty is heavy. And yeah. so, uh, you know, it's it's a problem and then the other thing is you're sitting confined and sitting still can aggravate your rsi so you can have all kinds of foot tapping ankle circling things going on um they don't like you to get up and roll roam around the cabin so much anymore especially with all the new turbulence that's happening because of global warming but you know if you can move um as much as you can you know and not to to be rude or inconsiderate of your fellow passengers. You don't want your elbows in their, um, their space, but moving really helps. And, you know, the other thing is if, if you're going to a hotel and the bell person is coming in, maybe you could have that person lift your suitcase onto the luggage rack so you don't have to do it. And um, there's just all kinds of tips. Maybe you've got some other ones I'm well, uh, the one tip I have, Deborah, is to pre-board. In other words, I have the twin situations of being 
over 70 as well as being disabled. So I'm, I always get to pre-board Southwest. And so far since the pandemic, I've taken a total of two flights. But I always pre-board because they say if you need additional help. Mm -hmm. And I try not to put anything in the overhead bin. If I need to do so, I will ask somebody to do it for me. And if I have something up front, somebody will often uh, take it down for me. So the thing I have learned, and thanks to your books and everything, is we have to ask. Because if we ask, we can reduce the amount of pain that we're in. So, you know, you can ask somebody. Because I see some people on the flight, they say, can you take this down for me? You know, yeah. we can do the same. So, yeah. so we can now, ask and we can pre-board. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I worry maybe it's an occupational hazard since I'm very alert to repetitive strain injury. But I worry about everybody because the... This, the airline personnel actually get or they get carpal tunnel syndrome from pushing the carts uphill is we don't realize it when we're flying but they're walking uphill or downhill so it creates an additional um strain on their bodies when they're pushing those carts and handing things to people and um you know it's just we need to really analyze how we work and how we can use our bodies optimally so that we're not placing strain on any one single part too much moving on to another thing that alexandria brought up she she said uh, something interesting about choosing her clothing so uh, yes. talk to us about that alexandria um yeah i, I thought about this even more this morning because uh, i hope you don't mind a little backstory um this kind of came about uh in the early days of my rsi and I remember being at a bus stop waiting and there was this woman, probably about 45, 50 years old. Um, she was like a fashion plate, yet she was disabled, very obviously. And um, she looked fantastic and she had a cane and that cane just was like the best accoutrement to her whole ensemble. But I studied what she was wearing and I realized, okay, no buttons, no laces, um, everything was easy to put on. And I'm like, aha. Uh -huh. And so I took that to heart and I've always liked, you know, buttons and things, but I had to let that go. So easy to wear clothing. Um, you want it to be easy to take, put on, take off, uh, boots with zippers, um, I don't know if I read this in your book or someone else, but there was the suggestion, and it works, uh, if you use a clothes hanger and you loop it into that part of the zipper that has the hole, mm -hmm. and then you pull up on it. I don't know if that was you or not, um, but it, it works because I like zippers on my boots. Um, but shoes, like Howard says, uh, ones that you can just step into uh, and close or close easily. Uh, definitely are very helpful. Um, jewelry, I so for necklaces, I make sure that they go over my head now. I don't have to bother with clasps. Um, yeah, so I really change. Oh, and clo oh, the other thing, make sure the clothing you buy is easy to just wash, hang, or throw in the dryer. No ironing. I haven't ironed for probably 25 years. I won't iron ever. It's just too hard. Yeah, it's um, something I like to dance with my iron. You know, I kind of <laughs> I move back and go. forth with with the iron. But that's another thing. You know, housework. We really haven't gotten too much um, into the the housework angle, other than reducing your standards by a yeah. lot. You know, oh, yeah. like you said earlier, letting the dishes um, yeah. sit. <clears throat> yeah in the sink, fine. And so I'm so happy that the two of you were willing to come be on the, um, the live stream today is because some of the best tips have come from people with RSI because they've had to figure it out. Yes. Um, people with RSI tend to get very savvy about how to you know, maneuver things or ask for things. My big oh. thing is doors. Oh I, my God. Oh my God, doors are so hard. I did a whole 
I did two separate videos on doors. And the other day, someone was coming out of my building and there's a very heavy door. And so basically, you know, you don't want to let a door slam in somebody else's face, but they don't know you're injured. Yeah. So I held it with my foot. Yep. Um, you know, but it's just, you know, I am so grateful when anyone opens a door for me. Oh, no kidding. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am Most so glad to do that. Um, for doors, too, what uh, you can do, I use my cane to keep the thing open. So you can be creative uh, with a cane. How do you use your cane, uh, Howard? Just to hold it open. But how? You know, I, I, I use it cut like a block, you know. But so you put, put it the between the door, from? between the door and the outside. In other words, it takes me a while to use the combination lock at work, you know, because we have to put in a code. So uh -huh. I would put the cane as soon as I get the thing open. So that way I can mosey through because I'm also kind of slow. Oh, so it's like a door stopper. Yes, it's like a door stop. So I can uh, I can do that. But I think the main thing for uh, wearing my keys is that way I don't have to reach for the key to open uh, my, my door at my house. So mm -hmm. to me, that's one thing because... Again, I revert back to my days as a child. You know, when, when you wore everything on yourself, that's mm -hmm. what I do. And and the one thing I, in terms of clothing is because of the pandemic, when we were working at home, we kind of dressed down. So I don't mm -hmm. wear shirts anymore, which you have to button. I just wear a T-shirt depending on what it is. So some days, depending on my mood, like today I'm wearing one about my birth, my, my vintage. I wear something about... Uh, the Navy that I was in or my union or something like that. I make a statement, but I don't have to button the shirt up and that is really, really good. And I don't have to tuck the thing in. So I just try to look for uh, kind of shortcuts. So I appreciate again, Alexand Alexandra just mentioning what she does because it gives me food for thought, but the pandemic helped me in terms of not having to uh, dress for success. Because, you know, we show up uh, three days a week in the office and two days at home. Do you mind if I interject with one more? Well, I've got lots, but I mean, the one more thing that helps. Um, it, it's sort of a twofold thing. Uh, my hair is not naturally curly. Um, it's normally frizzy and wavy. And to get curls, so if you like to put curls in your hair, but you can't do a curling iron or curlers um before i go to bed i will put mousse in my hair and then i will tie it up on top of my head like a bun and then i sleep like that and the next morning i take my um scrunchie out and i have curly hair wow, so, wow. but i have a lot of bad hair days and when I go out in public, um, I have, again, that wonderfully fashionable lady, uh, what she taught me was you can wear hats. Hats will cover up any bad hair day. And everyone thinks you're just being in fashion. But no, your hair is just not being cooperative or you can't be bothered to do anything with it because your hands don't work well. So anyway. plus it's a great, it's the best sunscreen. You know, yep. a lot of people are yep. sensitive to sunscreen ingredients. I haven't thought about that. You're yeah. right. Yeah. So hats. I have hats and some of them come with SPF factors in them. Really? Yeah. But hats are great. Um, and I mean, speaking of hats, they make these little things um, under the hat because hats can fly away. So <laughs> unless you like walking around with your hand on your head. Um, you might want to invest in these little um, elastic things that keep at least your, if your hat is blown off by the wind, you won't have to chase it down the street. And if you're wearing your hat when you grocery shop, as I always do, it comes in really happy. I live on the river and there's tons of wind. It can get very strong. Right. The wind can be brutal. So send me I, a link. A link to the, the little things. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, yeah, yeah. They make, well, 
they make bungee cord ones, but those are mainly for men. They have little clips, so you put one on the back of the brim and then one on your collar. But they also make the ones where there's little things you can put in the grow grain with little, little spikes. And then they, there's an adjustable thing, and it's a very thin cord. They come in black and white. So depending on the color of your hat, you can figure out what oh, color to do. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, all these little things make so much difference. Because, you know, as I said before, different solutions will work for different people depending oh, on their injury. Exactly. And, you know, it's, it's, I mean, people find great things and they think it'll be good for everybody, but you can't really make that assumption because you don't know what kind of injury someone has had. And it's just try to see what works with your individual RSI. Yes. Because I'm, as I mentioned, uh, oh. twisting and bending is my major, major, major problem. Twisting you know, and bending your wrist is what you mean. My wrist. My yeah. wrist is really, really bad. And that's why I can't drive. I mean, I could drive if I just went straight. I, I cannot turn the wheel. And when I ride the bus, it just amazes me the way the bus drivers turn the wheel. I just can't turn. So I try to deal with my everyday situations in terms of my RSI. So that's what, that is what I would suggest people do is, uh, you know, know your RSI, do what you can do to reduce the amount of pain you're experiencing, and remember the hand bank. Yeah. Thank you so much, Howard. Great advice. And my advice is take care of your hands because you can't use your other pair of hands to do what you want to do. <laughs> and I'd like to thank Alexandria and Howard for coming on this live stream. They'll be back for more wonderful tips about RSI. And, uh, it's always good to hear from people who've had it for a long time. And before I close, I'd like to remind everybody to please sign the petition for the RSI Bill of Rights. This is really important. What we're trying to do here is to prevent repetitive strain injury. And there's a 12-point blueprint in this document. You can find it on change.org. I will link leave a link in the details below so that you can sign it yourself. We have had signatures from over a dozen countries. So if you're listening from a country that's not the U.S. and you want to take the lead and make this happen in your own country, this is a blueprint for you. But it's really important to um, st stop RSI in its tracks. And we need to prevent it. And it's, it's not an easy or simple kind of thing. Ergonomics is not really the answer here. Education isn't even the answer. We need to have safer tools. So um, so anyway, I'd like to end with that. And again, thank you to my wonderful friends of the channel. We really appreciate your coming and we will end the broadcast now. Thank you, Deborah. You're welcome. Thank you, Deborah. You're welcome.